All right. Hello, guys. Welcome to this webinar where we will show you how you can increase your project efficiency with better project planning. In this webinar, we will showcase the latest that we have done within the Power Platform. We will show some updates to many of our core components, such as uh, our timeline, financials, uh, and of course, uh, the reporting that is connected to uh, project planning and, and program and portfolio planning. We will also showcase um, how this can be done within the, the Power Platform itself and how you can utilize uh, the new uh, updates that are coming to our solutions. Before we start, uh, there are a few things that we need to clarify. So if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask them. Uh, I will do my best to answer all of the questions uh, to the very end of the webinar. Until then, I, I will continue uh, presenting uh, and updating you guys with uh, the stuff that we have done for the last uh, three months. Let's get started. So, just a very short slide uh, about Projectum. For those of you guys that are new to Projectum, we have been in the business for quite some time. Uh, our main focus is, uh, of course, project and portfolio management. That's our niche, and it's been our niche for yeah, all the time that we have existed. Um, recently, we have uh, had a transition focus in terms of technology, where we have uh, moved our, our uh, focus into, of course, the, the Power Platform and supporting the elements that are within the Power Platform uh, itself. It doesn't mean that, of course, we do not support uh, uh, Paragon and Chef and all the stuff. We still do support that, but our focus when it comes to the, the developing new stuff will be uh, inside the, the Power Platform as a whole. A little bit about me. Uh, I'm the director of the Power Platform. Uh, I have a, a background within uh, CBS, uh, within business and IT, how to interconnect the two worlds together. And then I have a few certifications within uh, the Power Platform. Uh, but enough about me, that's not the interesting part here. Let's get started looking into uh, what we have done uh, the last couple of months. So in order to understand the journey that we're on, I want to highlight the key pillars of products that we currently have within uh, our product catalog. I mean, we, we, um, we are very proud of all of these products since uh, all of them uh, are um, uh, helping, uh, facilitating, uh, enforcing a better uh, and more effective way of working, optimizing your work, uh, so to say. What we're looking into today will be the uh, Power PVM and, and how that works and the new updates and the new uh, elements, how you can uh, interact with it, uh, how you uh, can utilize it, how it differentiates between uh, uh, working with a project, a program and a portfolio. Then we will look a little bit into the, uh, the Power Hub itself, how that works, uh, how that is enabled, and what is the Power Hub. And the Power Hub is a, it's a, a fairly new concept that we have developed uh, as a report offering on top of uh, our core solutions, which means that we have the same capabilities that you would have uh, in an Azure SQL Server, but we have that within uh, the Power Hub, uh, and we will. Um, We'll talk much more about this, what kind of benefits you get and what is the difference uh, between this and as let's say the TDS endpoint for Microsoft, where you also have a possibility to connect directly to Dataverse. We will also talk about that. So you will uh, hopefully get the full understanding why we have done this and, and the benefits that you can uh, you can get out of uh, having a, a Power Hub solution. Team Planner, Time for Teams, and Presented, all of them uh, are integrated in the e ecosystem of our products, but we will not touch uh, much about those uh, products in, in this little uh, webinar, just so you are aware. Yes. So, been, since we have been in the business for quite some time and, and many years, we have seen lots of uh, different companies with different uh, sizes, different sectors, with different challenges, and different ways of working, and where is it that we can help? Where is it that we can go in and, and make a difference? It's no secret that uh, our main strength for many, many years have been the tooling part, since we have been very good at, at, at uh, helping, configuring, developing, filling in the gaps, or whatever that might have been uh, in some areas that we could help with. Um, and one example is uh, our long-lasting uh, resource management uh, solution, now called uh, Team Planner. That's been part of the, uh, the ecosystem of our products for many, many, many years. Um, but in this case, what I would highlight here and what we should focus on is uh, what is it that we, we now have of possibilities to do? But how can we increase our uh, efficiency when it comes to project planning? And, and moreover, how can we fish, increase our efficiency when it comes to 
program planning and, and portfolio planning. So looking in the past and uh, looking in, into how, how can you do a, a program planning, how can you do portfolio planning? Um, it's, it's really up to the individual company to set some definitions on, on how to do this. But in many cases, that they want some kind of uh, justification when it comes to some budget. They want some kind of justifications when it comes to are we on track, not on track from a time and perspective. And they also need to have an idea of, OK, so uh, do you have any risk or issues or is there anything that we need to be extra aware of when it comes to the program as a whole? Then some companies, if you're building like, let's say you're building a, a large bridge or a huge, huge project, then you might need to go into micromanagement perspective and look into a very, very detailed plan uh, and take that into account. That's uh, perfectly normal when you have uh, projects like that. Or when I, whenever you are, let's say ex as an example, within the pharma industry, you might have a very detailed uh, um, uh, session or section within your project plan that is dedicated to, let's say, testing and other stuff because that's uh, regulatory uh, needed. But you might also have situations where you have uh, programs that are, are filled with different types of, um, of projects that are coming from the Agile world. It could be, um, let's say, uh, Azure DevOps. You could also have projects that are more traditional, uh, coming from project uh, decline. And then you could have lightweight projects, maybe coming from planner. And then you could have uh, projects that even might come from Jira. And how do you handle, uh, let's say, a program or portfolio when you have so many different types of projects? That could be a challenge. And this is one of the things that, that we can help you with when, when we're talking PowerPoint, when we're talking this solution, this platform as a whole. And this is also where the Power Hub comes into play because the, because the Power Hub can uh, integrate with, with different data sources and, and pump the data into uh, this common data uh, base uh, and, and enable a common data model uh, down in the, in the Azure SQL database. So what we will look into here uh, and what I will present for you today is an example where we have extracted uh, different um, execution uh, projects. And when I say execution projects, I mean projects coming from project, project coming from Jira, and then one project coming from Azure DevOps. And again, this is just demo data, but, uh, but hopefully you can see uh, how this could work. Yes. And we will focus on the strategic part, uh, the portfolio and program level, but I will also go down to a project so you can see uh, how you can enrich uh, a project and how you can enable um, a lightweight uh, tracking uh, that doesn't take uh, endless of time when you do administrative work on top of your project. Um, so let's uh, let's look into that. OK, so uh, I will switch now and, and present you uh, our solution and I will try to do it uh, as slow as I can uh, because I know for a fact we might have a, a little bit of latency on the line. I will just switch my camera a little bit. Hopefully that's OK because I have so many screens here, so I need to see the full screen in order to do a, a proper demo. But this is a. Uh, this is PowerPM in its current version um, and with the latest releases that we have right now. And as you can see, and the first thing you see when you come into the system is of course a dashboard of how 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 we're doing, how we're doing for this entire uh, portfolio, since it's a portfolio dashboard. You can see that you have different projects uh, defined, divided by different stages and, and so forth. That's, that's quite uh, nice to know uh, exactly in the beginning without necessarily have to extract a dedicated report. How are we doing? Um, how many risks do we have? Uh, are they active, not active? Issues, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. But let's take a step deeper. Let's take a look at some of the challenges that we have seen in the past, also from a tooling point of view. How to do proper uh, program management without uh, having a very, very detailed plan with too many uh, potential uh, restrictions and connections and uh, integrations and other stuff. But from a lightweight point of view, how can we integrate uh, um, a program in the best possible way? So in here, we have uh, two active programs. And as you can see uh, from the uh, overview here, uh, the, the, the view, this uh, program called Workforce 2 has currently five projects connected to it. So what Dataverse does is that it allows us to build a very flexible data model which means that we can interconnect to almost any given level that we want. It also means that uh, from a program point of view, we can aggregate that towards a portfolio, but we can also say that a project belongs not only to, to a program always, but it could also belong directly to a portfolio. Having this kind of flexibility enables us to do more real life examples of how uh, 
projects, programs are, are, are interconnected in portfolios in, in the business that we work with. When I click on this, um, I'm guided into this uh, dashboard front page uh, for the program. And what is really important to, to mention here is that since we have this flexible data model, it's also possible for us to do some aggregations on top of some key data inside the system. This could be a, a top-down management of the program budget. So this is the it's a top down. We expect to use this and we have a CAPEX budget of this. But when we roll up the stuff here and, and now we could have done the CAPEX definitions and the OPEX definitions, you can see that right, right now uh, something is wrong. So maybe the project managers that are, are running the individual projects or the project director that are running these haven't really been informed that of course uh, your top down uh, budget uh, should be aligned when the bottom up uh, calculation is done. So and an, an example like that, that's also how you can become more efficient. You're using the data within the system to basically lift it up to a, a program level. You can also see the same thing counts for risks and, and issues. Uh, they are lifted up from the individual uh, projects. And what you could do in this case is saying, OK, so if it's a really big program, let's say uh, 20 plus projects with hundreds of uh, risk, maybe it would make more sense just to show the, uh, the most uh, uh, severe risks and how do you define that? Yeah, I've heard many, many customers say that that's of course the, the impact score. No, not necessarily all the time, but it could be uh, impact in terms of costs. It could be um, severity in terms of uh, delivering the project and so forth. It's up to the individual uh, use case uh, in terms of how you want to define this. Then I would say one of the strong things that we uh, have within our solution is the possibility to see projects across in a view like this. I just make it larger. So as you can see here, and I will close all of these, this is our program view time phase. So this is a this is a way where we extract all the information that are within the individual projects and then we pull it into a time phase view like this and showcase the metadata. And what we can make actually do in here, if we don't want to go directly onto each of the individual uh, tasks or projects, we can go in and we can change stuff uh, directly in here and, and make the change so it will uh, update the information. I could also go in here and, and change the change uh, directly here, or I could uh, uh, delete it or work with a new task uh, uh, just like this. So we have different ways of enabling an easy way to interact with your with your program and, and your project. Uh, and this is very important in terms of uh, increasing efficiency in that sense that you don't have to go into, let's say, 10, 15 different projects and then wait for some database to aggregate everything up in a report in, in order to do the changes. So what we actually see some of our customers do if they do not have, let's say, uh, hundreds, hundreds of, of projects is that they actually interact directly in here, but they have the possibility to build the uh, work breakdown structure as a program directly in here. What we also can uh, do when it comes to, to this view is that we can uh, use the hotkey commands, as you see, indent, outdent, you know them already from, uh, from project. And then we can uh, uh, reuse some of the practices that we have seen and in, in will work well uh, from, for many, many, many years. You can assign people as well uh, if you want directly in here. Uh, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, into the individual uh, project itself. This could be as a sample, uh, be our, our trial demo uh, uh, account here. And if I do like this, this then it will happen. You can even uh, define, uh, now I only want to see the certain filters. So imagine that we have a, a team that is working within a program, or something similar to that. So instead of going into eight or nine different projects, you, you work with a team, a team, this could be a team reference. And then you just do the filter and then you see uh, that uh, those tasks that are interconnected. So what we have done for this specific case is that we have uh, kept the filter on the project level just to indicate that you can see. So where is the project even though you when you do the filter? That's uh, on purpose because sometimes when everything is removed, you can get a little bit confused if you don't know where the corresponding uh, projects uh, are located. So that's a way of, of doing it. What we can also do, and what I cannot show you right now in the demo, is that we can say, now I only want to see the most critical tasks in the next 30 days. Then you enable a filter uh, where you sort on the end date, and then you say uh, 30 days, and then you fill on that. 
What would happen in here is that uh, it will showcase the tasks uh, that have a definition of critical the next 30 days. And, and enabling uh, 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 what do you say, a view like this um, is something that I've seen many, many project managers, program managers, product directors uh, work with when they do status reporting. So in, instead of actually uh, having to prepare a, a status report directly or having to spend some time adjusting stuff in there, you could do that directly in this view and then send a screenshot or present it directly to, uh, to a student group meeting if that's uh, what you guys want. Then we also acknowledge that maybe in some cases you might not need need the uh, the Gantt view like this, the timeline. Maybe it's even better than just to switch to a view like this. And as you can see here, um, what this is intended is that in many cases when, when you have stuff uh, that you need to fill in and when you have a lot of uh, fields, comments, columns, this would be a, a very good dedicated view because then you could have a lot of information on the screen fill it in, uh, work with it, and, and, and uh, almost like an Excel-like feeling uh, work with your, your project. And of course, the same uh, features and functionality is applied here. So uh, whenever you search uh, here and, and do stuff, it's also applied in, in this view. It might also be the, the case where you say, no, 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 this is a way too compl complex for me. Uh, I don't even need to see any fields whatsoever. Then you could do like this, then you only see uh, the, uh, the get. And uh, of course, you can decide what kind of uh, custom uh, supporting uh, fields that you want uh, to have uh, inside your uh, view like this. This is a fully configurable and up to the individual program slash project manager to decide. Another thing that we heard might be uh, needed, of course, was uh, the definition of time that has been part of our product for some time, but in, in here, we also have the possibility to go a little bit more uh, into details, which means that we can enable a scroll bar. So let's imagine that you had had a very long uh, program with much details and, and you had a, a, a quarter uh, a time frame here, then you could enable scroll bar and you could do scrolling in here uh, as well. Just something that makes it a little bit easier to, to work with. You could assign uh, risk issues directly to this uh, if you wanted and the data model was built directly for it. So you could present for this specific task, uh, we have a specific uh, issue risk that we need to, to act on top of. One of the newest features that we also have implied uh, to, to this is that we have the possibility to work with RAC calculations, which means that we can include what we have seen in, in uh, some of the uh, previous uh, installations that we have done uh, on, on Project Online especially, a possibility to, to work with a, a dedicated RAC calculation based on time or based on simply a, a, a status uh, choice field saying that in progress uh, or uh, high, medium, low, depending on, on what kind of logic that uh, you guys want. To make it more graphical, to make it nicer to look at, to, to basically emphasize the, the idea of that we can use this maybe as a, as a status report and don't necessarily have to, to create uh, separate status reports uh, on the side. Yes. All of these features that are in here and, and much more, you can of course uh, read about when we do our official wave three release uh, here in January, if you want to have everything that is uh, in, in the uh, feature release. You can also do filtering and all the stuff. Yes, so the last thing I will show you in here, uh, and this is also something that we think is, is, is quite powerful. So um, if, if you have um, inter interdependencies across, you also have the possibility to do like this. So you can actually build in a better way of, of interacting with your, uh, with your projects within your program. But it's very important to state that doing this, this is a, um, a soft dependency, right? So this is not something that they will necessarily be directly enforced in, inside the project uh, when it comes in, but the date will move and all that stuff in there. And the reason for why we have this as a soft dependency is that we have seen in the past, if we do too many hard dependencies like this, we might end up in a situation where it can become uh, quite complex for, uh, let's say, the individual project managers to handle a program a portfolio like this. But you have the possibility to highlight that if there was a dependency and if this project is moved, it has consequences on the entire program slash portfolio. And this is, uh, uh, in our eyes, a, a very uh, beneficial thing to, to be able to do. Yes. So that's a little bit when it comes to the timeline, how to work with, with programs, how to work with projects. Um, and what, what I could also do is that I say, OK, now instead instead of uh, just looking at the program, 
I could go all, all the way down to uh, an image of the project. And what you would see here is uh, almost an exact copy, uh, but just on project level, uh, a little bit more uh, simplified. And, and, and the viewer that, that uh, looking into the details would see that, okay, now it looks a little bit uh, different. Yes, it does, because in here, this is designed to what the project managers would like to see. So the other one was designed to what the program managers would like to see, or project directors. Um, so that's also a way of saying, okay, you don't necessarily need to have the exact same view. It's very really dependent on what kind of use case or what kind of uh, tracking and, and how you steer the project, uh, what you actually want to see. Then you have the same uh, functionality as you saw before. Nothing has really uh, changed in, in, in this view. Yes. So one of the things that we've also been working at, I'm going down to our project again, um, is a, a new and updated way of doing financials. So in here, uh, you can see that we have defined uh, the project financials for this specific project. You can see what happened when I actually collapsed this. Uh, it just takes the totals. And uh, you can also see that I have a certain different cost type dimensions here. For this uh, given example, I have budget, action, and forecast. And then some of you might say, what, why is it that I only have budget and actual in November? It's because the forecast is automatically integrated only in the future months to come. So one way of, of becoming more efficient, you don't even have to take it into account if you already have passed that specific month. Small rules like that, small logic components that should hopefully help not becoming uh, too complex, but help you as a user becoming more uh, efficient. And in here, I can just fill in the data and fill in some uh, other stuff. What we're looking into here is a uh, full uh, native integration. Sorry, my fat fingers, I was clicking uh, too fast uh, to, uh, let's say, some of the uh, uh, heavy data uh, actual uh, systems like SAP, AX, uh, and others to simply pump data directly into the system. Or it could even be a CRM data that could be in injected directly in here. If I then want to, to add on another year, it's a, it's a fairly simple process. Uh, you can put in a pinned year and then I click and now I'm in uh, 2021. And then I just start filling in uh, more information. Then some people might see and, and look at the, uh, the screen now and say, why isn't the forecast automatically updated? Again, um, we have seen some people, uh, some companies have different ways of uh, calculating the forecast. It could be the difference between the budget and actual, of course. But it could also be some some other calculations that need to take into account. So for now, uh, initially, it's uh, it's something that you have to enter yourself. But we are of course looking into maybe uh, doing some optimizations when it comes to the the forecast component here. Again, if I click on this, uh, you see how fast it is, and you see an interact, and you see that it's filtered uh, on the years that I have uh, in total. I use the same functionality here, make it a full screen, and uh, you see we have done quite some some thinking in, in trying to set the, the UI that we have done in our timeline uh, component and, and in injecting that uh, on top of the uh, uh, financial component as well. So that is something that we uh, invest uh, some, some stuff in. Good. So now it's on totals. Uh, of course, it doesn't fill up in its uh, in totals. The areas over here are fully configurable, which means that I can change these areas uh, to the information that I want to. Uh, I'm just going to do like this. So if if I was, uh, uh, let's say, a, a project controller, finance controller, I could go in here and I could see, OK, so which one of these uh, areas uh, do we need, these categories? And then I could be able to change these. So there's nothing that's hard coded when it comes to these different areas. It is what you guys need to, to, to work with when it comes to uh, doing uh, project financial tracking. Yes. So let's go back to the program again. And I have, uh, what is it, 20 minutes left, Jonathan. We also need to talk uh, reporting. So one of the new things that are coming and some of the things that we haven't had in the past in a good way is that the possibility to do program finance. So I'm very excited to, uh, to present this uh, new feature. Uh, and this feature is uh, right now uh, aggregating the information, but it's aggregating the information in time phase view within the same grid. Uh, as you could see before, and then you have the totality of, of how much I, is the actual program actually spending. So uh, we will uh, continue to work with this, making it a little bit more easy to see, okay, so where are the individual uh, cost uh, definitions here coming from, my program, and so forth. We have many, many good things on, on the roadmap when it comes to financials. 
uh, business case, uh, uh, other stuff that, that is uh, something that we have seen uh, in the many years that we have been in the business. And it's, it's the same uh, functionality, just rolled directly up uh, on top of a, a program. The same goes for risk stakeholders. Uh, they're not that excited when it comes to this uh, little thing. So what I would like to do now is that I would like to go in here and, and make uh, an update so you can see and then make a, a large update. So let's go into uh, financials and now you saw the numbers were updated based on the information that we just put in. You saw that happened and let's uh, enter a, a fairly large number in here. And let's uh, do a, a recalculation and now you see that it's quite some uh, last budget that we have had on, on this specific project. What I will show you now, and, and before we before I do that, I go back to the PowerPoint for just a, a couple of minutes, is the reporting part. So one thing is that we have been focusing on uh, enabling a better program management experience, enabling a more lightweight, simplified way of doing uh, uh, project planning and, and project efficiency here. Uh, another thing is that is interconnected. You need some better reporting capabilities. You need to be able to report almost on the fly. You need to be able to see what happened to two months ago. Why did my decision change like that? What was the reason for that? Because if you as a project manager, you as a program manager, director for that matter, uh, have that kind of information, it's a super powerful uh, weapon that you can utilize whenever you have, a, a, let's say, a potential change or, or something goes wrong or someone not, wants to learn why your project was the best project. So what we have done here is that we have uh, two different ways of uh, looking at reporting. And I will just uh, switch my screen again. Thank you. Uh, yeah, sorry for that one down there. Let's just uh, let's just remove that for a second. Sorry for that. Uh, there we go. So there we go. Two different ways of looking at reporting. So we, we build a report on top of data versus the old uh, CDS. And what we have as the first option is the possibility to, to use the TDS endpoint. And for those of you guys that haven't heard about this, but what does it mean? It means that uh, Microsoft uh, a couple of days ago uh, took this uh, feature out of uh, public preview and into general availability, which means that we are now able to connect directly to um, uh, Dataverse uh, through a direct query. And in this case, uh, in the old ways of doing it, we have uh, been able to connect to Dataverse, but we never had the possibility to have data flowing into the system like this. Now we have, um, on, the, on the downside is that uh, we don't really have uh, capabilities to change much. So it's a, it's a SQL um, um, uh, Azure uh, database that we have the possibility to, to read but we can't really modelize uh, the data in the intended way. And there's no history of data, it's just raw data uh, that you get uh, inside of this uh, report capability. But nevertheless, uh, in our eyes, it's still uh, uh, an upside because it's something that enables us to do reports uh, through uh, DC uh, connections. So that's one way of doing it. On top of this, we uh, we have built uh, our PowerHop uh, solutions, our framework, and and to be honest, so one of the things that we really we really missed when it came to the direct query TDS endpoint was the the possibility to do audits, the possibility to do snapshots, the possibility to do proper historical tracking, uh, and not only on Dataverse. That's really really important to state that this concept, the PowerHop itself, can connect to the data sources that we have within our ecosystem and Azure DevOps and soon to be Jira. So uh, it's not only applicable on top of this uh, data source, uh, but the others that I also mentioned, because we needed some kind of ecosystem in order to extract, let's say, the uh, team planner information, uh, the time information, and then of course also uh, the project management uh, slash product related information. And that we can do in, uh, in Power Hub. The way it works, is that it's basically the foundation uh, of uh, our uh, solution landscape. Uh, and this is uh, the reasons for why to go with it. So you have full data history and snapshot plus change history, which means that you can see who actually changed this. So for those of you that are familiar with the audit process within uh, a model to an app, you know that you can set on audits. Fine, you can do that. But in this case, you get it for free. 
which means that you do not load the system unnecessarily uh, heavily when it comes to performance. This one is uh, easier to read from a reporting point of view, but because you can extract the data. So uh, yes, there's a possibility that you can extract the audit directly from a uh, model apps, but it's really, really complex to do. This you get for free. Uh, this is it, it updates automatically uh, when it comes to the audits. It supports the multiple uh, sources, and we're looking into the, to the Jira. Uh, I, I just heard from uh, the product owner. Then we have the possibility to simply um, fetch the external data like SAP, AX, uh, other data uh, in here and, and, and make uh, this, um, let's say, the base for, for doing a lot of uh, good uh, project related uh, reporting, program portfolio related reporting. Yes, we have standard lookup views that we have uh, done and, and really uh, cross, cross many, 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 many uh, uh, project and uh, Power Pivot customers. Uh, and that experience we have taken from there, we have defined some standard lookups and views that you can utilize and work with instead of having to build everything from scratch every single time. And then last but not least, and this is one of the key um, uh, punchlines when it comes to comparing the uh, Power Hub versus the direct query TDS endpoint from Microsoft, is that it has a much better performance. So the TCS, uh, TDS, we, we cannot really scale up. In this case, since it's hosted in Azure, you can scale it up almost uh, infinity, in, in, in infinite. Uh, but of course, the cost follows. Just so uh, you, you hear that from from me. Yes, and then last but not least, uh, this is hosted directly on, on your side, uh, so you are uh, in in control of all the data that is in place. Okay, so uh, I think we should take a look. Um, I think we should take a look. So first, I will show you um, the TDS and how that can be done, and then I will show you a, an example of uh, how the Power Hub uh, report can uh, can look like. Uh, so you can see that a little bit more in details. So if I go into uh, the Power uh, PPM solution and click on the uh, portfolio report, you can see that we have different uh, um, standard slides here, and standard uh, sheets within the report. I can go down to the uh, to the ideation, and this is the ideation in here within the system. And then when I update, uh, this flows directly in. But let's just take a look at the changes that we did um, not that long ago. I think it's a little bit easier to see uh, in the portfolio here. So you see, I put in this big, big number for the uh, Dupafan uh, DNA analysis system, and now it's directly updated within the system. And if we put in another idea or another project, this should also flow into the system uh, within a, a couple of uh, uh, seconds. In most cases, there's a little bit of delay, but it's uh, in average uh, around 30 seconds uh, for this to be updated. And, and, and that, that is how it works. And this is built on top, directly on top of the, uh, the CDS, uh, and it's utilizing the standard uh, connections that uh, the Microsoft is uh, uh, providing. You have to enable this on top of your uh, environment in order for it, it to work. So save and close, idea 36. Let's go in. I hope the demo gods are, are with me today. And let's see uh, whenever it loads. There we go, idea 36. So you see, that's how fast it is. That is the power of direct query. So this is uh, what you get both from uh, the Power Hub and from the TDS endpoint. But what else do you get for the Power Hub? Now I will explain. So, well, yeah. Just quickly breaking in here. Um, we have quite a lot of questions just uh, for your information. OK, uh, I, would, I would really like to show, showcase the Power Hub. Can okay. continue. Can you continue? Uh, because that's the, like the, my final argument. All right, but good, Jonathan. So let's switch uh, into uh, showcasing the power. And before um, I go into to, uh, to too much details, and I'm trying not to be too technical. Okay, I will show you uh, how it looks from um, uh, administration point of view. And the reason for this, I will show you how easy it is to add extra elements into your solution. So this is the Power Hub portal. This is a portal where we basically say, okay, what kind of data sources is connected? In this case, it's our test environment for Power Pivot, and it's the CDS Dataverse. Yeah, yeah, we know it's called Dataverse, but we call it CDS here. We will update that. When you click on this, uh, you can see that it, it, it loads 
all of the um, tables that are within the solution, and then it uh, basically highlights if they are synced enabled or not synced enabled. And if I look at the uh, our put reference, which is our uh, way of defining uh, which uh, tables that we're using, we can see we have auto enabled all of these as a standard uh, synchronization. And the good things about this is that um, when you then add a new element to your solution, it could be now let's say I want to add advanced uh, uh, change management. You only have to go in here, click the sync enable button, and then you can start utilizing that in, in your reports. Uh, I think that's quite uh, powerful. Let's say uh, in, in, other, in other areas like a standard report, you first had to extract, you have to validate, you have to uh, configure, then you have to basically hopefully uh, do some, some data modeling and, and then maybe you would be able to, to work with it. You can see here uh, that in the statistics that we are only synchronizing 72 out of 465 uh, tables. And the reason for that is that we don't want to over pollute our database with unnecessarily uh, information. And then last but not least, you can do a, a hard refresh and refresh data just to do some testing if you have new stuff coming in to validate that everything is floating directly into the system. All right. That was a little bit more from an admin point of view, but it's important to state that this is, of course, hosted in your Azure. Uh, you, you, it's configured to, to whoever admin that needs to have access and, and you have full control to this. So how can we utilize this? How can you as a project manager become more efficient utilizing the, uh, the power up? One of the key examples could be snapshots or trend analysis or involvement within your project. And this is an example of that. So since we have the possibility to simply do Delta Sync uh, within our Power Hub, we can track at a given time in uh, at a given point in time how was the status at our project. So you don't have to necessarily push a button. You don't have to set up workflows. You don't have to push uh, um, a Power Automate start generated flow. The, the the Power Hub itself can actually be configured to to look into this. So in here you can see that the, the first snapshot that we did for this earnings was in, in January and then in February and then in March. And then you say, yeah, but what, what is this? This is the last day of the month. And then uh, you can see a trend that it's going on. And then you can see the same thing uh, for the other trend analysis uh, uh, visualizations that we've done here. So this is, uh, this is the stage. So how does the project evolve? Uh, is it floating as we expected within our portfolio? Yes, it is. And then last but not least, you can see the project status. I know for a fact that some of the customers that I've been working with lately, they use this uh, as an example of measuring if uh, everything's okay or if it's not okay, and, 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 and basically seeing how can we learn from this? How can we improve our uh, project slash portfolio tracking? Then we also have a possibility to go much more in details. And, and these details can be some of the financial stuff that I showed you guys. Uh, since it's part of the, uh, the data model, we could do like this. Again, we follow the same uh, snapshot uh, structure, and then we just populate with the data in here. So if there was a huge change, or if there was a huge change uh, uh, necessarily needed to be applied to the project, you should be able to see that there's a difference in here, right? As you can see, what, what happened? Why did that happen? And then you could make a, a, a tooltip example, uh, emphasizing the, the reason for that change. The same could be with the uh, with the snapshot for the, the projects up here. Uh, this is just a totality. And again, this is just examples so you can see how we can utilize uh, the data. You could even make a little uh, risk timeline like this, where you say, OK, so how uh, did our project evolve throughout the, the life cycle of a project? You could use that for, for lessons learned uh, sessions or uh, other sessions in order to evaluate if your project was a success or not. Um, Again, examples, but again, uh, I cannot emphasize uh, enough that the, the importance here is to have the, the backbone, uh, the power hub in, in place if you want to have these uh, capabilities. Jonathan, I think we have to reserve the last five minutes for questions. All right. Yes. I think that's a good idea. Are you able to uh, view them yourself or do you want uh, to? Let's take a look uh, if my mouse is working. I think my mouse is uh, it's coming it's coming it's a little bit slow let's uh, I'll take the mouse pad instead um, so let's see as the nine months that we have published uh, okay so uh, how is the logic uh, between task breakdown activities uh, in projects and risk yes 
Good question. So uh, let's go back to a, a project. I will try to do uh, what the most I can in order to answer as many pos uh, questions as possible. So since we have a flexible data model, what we can actually do is, as you can see here, there's a little bit of latency. If I edit this one, we have a possibility to relate this one directly to a task. So we already know for a fact that this is connected to a project because it belongs to the project as a parent uh, relation, but we can also look up a task in here if we want, and then we can connect that directly to this. And when we do this, uh, and, and when we want to highlight that in the, in the um, in the plan, then this would uh, basically show that this has a connection to failure to integration with uh, organization. Yeah. Um, yes, and then uh, how did you set rules for access in the various projects? Yeah. Yes, so um, rules when it comes to permissions. So what we also have developed is a standard permission model that we apply on top of every solution that we uh, will roll out for wave three, which means that we have a, a set of rules, uh, sorry, a set of roles uh, that is defined as a project manager, a portfolio manager and a project admin. And then we're looking into whether or not we should have team members in here or not. Uh, that, that's a, a decision we need to take in terms of also uh, what kind of benefits do they get of having uh, direct team members in here. But those three uh, are accessed uh, through these roles. And a role could be like that uh, if I'm a project manager, uh, I'm only allowed to see my own projects. Uh, and then I only have access to see uh, the information that is interconnected to those projects. So in this case, it would be that I can see this project, then I can see the risk, the financials, uh, the issues, et cetera, et cetera. But I, I would not necessarily be able to see the, the program information for the other projects that I'm interconnected to. So that's how we, we have done from a permission point of view, uh, the structure. You can also work with teams, uh, uh, and then you have uh, other possibilities to uh, set in permissions. Oh, and there's a question from Ankatrina. Hi, hi, And um, The timeline we demoed here, uh, especially from the program and also from the project, that's uh, our timeline. It's it's not a, a Microsoft uh, develop, but it's important to mention that we integrate uh, our information directly uh, into the client, so we can open uh, the information uh, we saw on the project level in the client and work with the, 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 the project plan in the client. Of course, we do not support all of the 1000 features that are within the client, but we support in our eyes the, the most important ones. Jonathan, you already asked, uh, answered that question. So, yes, how tricky is it relative to pull financial data from SAP? That's a good question. So what we have done is that we have done some, um, some uh, examples uh, for other customers pulling in data. And I would say if, if you do a proper uh, data mapping or data, data analysis uh, exercise and ensure that you have a, a proper data uh, provider and a, a, a proper data, um, what do you say, pusher of, in this case, we use data flows uh, as our main key, then it's okay to do. But of course, you need to ensure that the mapping, the keys, the identifications, uh, the error handling, and all the other elements that are connected to doing uh, integrations are in place. Uh, the system itself can handle quite a lot of data when it comes to uh, integrations. You can also, what we see in sometimes, put data directly into the Power Hub and then utilize the, the power of Azure SQL uh, and then show the, the data in a, in a report uh, as an uh, alternative. Right now, um, in Power Hub, yes, the, you can connect to uh, SAP data inside of uh, the Power BIM, uh, Power Platform as a, as a whole. Uh, but uh, within Power Hub, we don't have a, a SAP connector directly, not yet. Nevertheless, uh, we could, uh, I could ask the product owner uh, on that product to uh, put it on, uh, on the backlog. Uh, but what we normally do is that we integrate directly to the hub uh, through, um, uh, through integrations. Uh, it could be uh, the Boomi, it could be others, it could be, uh, yeah, uh, integrations that's already in, in place. It could also just be uh, direct data transfers if you have a data warehouse or any other things that uh, you already uh, are using. Um, any thoughts about decisions that are taken in a project? How to keep track of that? Any ideas in the background? Yes, 
that's a really good uh, question as well. So what, what I've seen some, some customers are doing is that they create a, a tab up here called decisions or lock or something similar to that. So it could be interconnected to, let's say, changes. And in here, within changes, uh, you could then have uh, key decisions that should be applied. And what you can then do is that you can extract that kind of information and connect that to tasks, milestones, uh, financial information if needed, and then pull that out in, uh, in a report for a later uh, review. That's what we have seen uh, other customers are doing. But it might be worth having that as a standard uh, part of our, our product, uh, duly noted. Yes, what are the requirements for having the Power Hub enabled? Good question as well. So right now, the Power Hub itself is hosted through uh, Azure. So uh, you need to have uh, an Azure subscription that you can tap into and it's an app service. And underneath that, of course, uh, we have uh, an Azure function and then we have a uh, key wall to handle the uh, authentication. And on, on, uh, underneath that, we, we have the SQL database, the Azure SQL database. And, and that's, let's say in lightweight uh, terms, that's the, uh, the components needed to, to have the, uh, the Power Hub installed and running. Um, do you have any business case example of uses of Power Hub platform uh, to track and monitor KPI from multiple sources? Yes, so um, we currently work with a Danish uh, company that has uh, not only uh, uh, Power PPM, but also uh, DevOps as a, as a source. And, and a lot of the execution is, is working within uh, DevOps, uh, but they need to extract the information, oh, sorry, in, in, and get in a portfolio of you uh, together with lightweight projects that are running in in the Power PM into a common uh, report uh, or you. That is an example of how you can track the two different uh, sources. Uh, last but not least, uh, on the finance grid, is it possible to only fill in amounts in year view instead of month? Good question. <laughs> so uh, we have had a lot of discussions about this. I hope you can stay for one more minute. So what there's referring to here is Right now, in the financial view itself here, whenever you collapse the uh, the entire year, you cannot really fill in uh, any information here. So we have had a lot of discussion in the product groups this, defining, okay, should we just do this and should we then be able to split it or should it only be on year? So for now, initially, we, we decided to go with this, but we are, of course, uh, uh, more than willing to hear your feedback if uh, if you want a possibility to just enter on years. Done. Done deal. So that is uh, what we have right now. Uh, more questions? <laughs> yeah, okay, there was more. Yeah. So, uh, is there any training sessions for this software app? How long does it take to learn how to use the same levels as presentation? So, I would say what we normally do in these cases is that uh, uh, we, of course, if it's a customer delivery, we train the trainer. We enable the guys that are, are going to work with this uh, to 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 the primary uh, of the navigation, so they can work with it and, and and have an understanding how this is interconnected. We also have the possibility to become a partner, a, a reseller that you can work with this, and, and then you will get the option to get a, a copy of the solutions and and play around with it. Um, in the future, we could make some videos uh, and some understanding on how to uh, how to work with it in more details. But we will recommend in the, in the beginning to to become a partner or or, or try it out uh, through a free trial uh, if that's what you you want. And of course, if it's a through free trial uh, example, uh, then we can uh, can connect, and I will be more than happy to uh, to help you uh, work with it. More questions? Yeah, wow. Okay, I think that's it, Jonathan. Uh, yes, it seems like uh, you <laughs> you reached the end of uh, all the questions. All right. Um, so, if there's any questions or anything, uh, feel free to uh, contact us on powerandprojector.com, and we will do whatever we can to answer your question as soon as possible. Jonathan, over to you. Yeah, I think uh, all there is left to say is uh, thank you for joining. And um, and yes, as Thomas says, uh, you're more than uh, welcome to reach out to us if you have further questions.
So uh, thank you for uh, joining the session. Yeah, thank you. Bye bye. Bye.